world she traveled. And her women who made a difference. Aquila Kids give to our community. Welcome to a personal interview with Judy Buffler, conducted on April 27, 2006 by Caroline. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so why is she such an important person to lacrosse? Uh, because um, she was one of, probably one of the most prominent philanthropists that this city has ever known. Um, she gave without ever wanting her name anywhere. And she not only gave money, but she served on almost all the boards that there were in lacrosse. Um, she was on the board of the first um, United Way. It was called Community Chest when they started it, and she was on that board. She served on the YWCA board and the um, Family and Children's Center. She was on that board, and she was just a wonderful lady who gave everything she had to the people in lacrosse. What were some of the main things she did, like where she donated to? Uh, Probably her biggest uh, donations were to the Gunderson Lutheran Medical Foundation, mm -hmm. um, to the La Crosse Community Foundation, and of course the Children's Museum. Mm -hmm. But um, until the Children's Museum, there was n she never um, wanted her name in lights. You know, she yeah. was pretty quiet behind the scenes. She wasn't a quiet lady. <laughs> She was really a, not a, eccentric, but she said what she thought, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, but her gift to the Children's Museum is probably, to me, one of the most significant things that she did mm -hmm. because it helped so many people. Yeah. I read that someone in her family owned the Salzer Steed Company. Yeah. Can you just... Her, her grandfather was a... Um, a Methodist minister who came to La Crosse and he um, established on the corner of it's on the corner of seventh seventh and division is the Salzer Methodist Church that he built mm. and then he started the Salzer Seed Company and in the 1800s and the Salzer Seed Company was the biggest one of the biggest seed companies in the United States. At one time, they get, they sent a million catalogs a year, oh, wow. and then she was the daughter of Henry Salzer, who took over the Salzer Seed Company when his father mm -hmm. died, and it was in existence until 1953. Did anybody? really encourage her to donate or donate with her any family or was it all just sort of um, her? No, I think that, you know, she was a Methodist and one of the Methodist beliefs was that you earn all you can, save all you can, and give all you can. And I think it was part of her family mm -hmm. tradition and she, she grew up giving, mm -hmm. you know, it was just natural to her. And uh, one interesting thing that I, I really admire about she, and she had one son who mm -hmm. never married, and um, between the two of them, they left everything that they had, millions of dollars in a trust that is ongoing for these organizations that got the money. Mm -hmm. they, they can never touch the principal, but they get a percentage of that, they get the interest mm -hmm. on that principal, and it'll be there forever. That's neat. And how many people would yeah. do that? You know, it yeah. was really admirable. In her life of doing these donations and helping out the community, were there any struggles for her or anything? Um, that yeah, she was 12 years old and her father was killed in a car accident. And so she and her mother they never had a money struggles, mm -hmm. you know, but um, they had to move, and you know I think it was a great loss that she grew up without a father, yeah. and um, and she and her mother um, had to move out of their they couldn't keep up their big house, you mm -hmm. know. 
she was very careful with with the money that mm -hmm. she spent. She was a great saver too. I mean, her refrigerator, I'd have to go out over there and clean it out because yeah. she'd save everything until it had moss growing on it. You know, it was really. <laughs> but I think the probably her struggle was the fact that her father died when she was young. Her husband died when she was, you know, they'd only been married about 10 years and he had a ruptured appendix and died. So it was just she and Sandy and I think she always would have liked to have had a bigger family and I, you know, I always considered her kind of my second mom yeah. because she sort of adopted my family mm -hmm. um, as part of Christmas traditions and things like that. But I don't, she never had any money struggles really. Um, I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. In her life, did she have any inspirations? You know, she had friends. You know, there used to be like a caste system. Do you know what that, that is where mm -hmm. there's a class of probably wealthy individuals and oh. then the middle class? Yeah. And mm -hmm. she could go between all of that, but her friends were all very philanthropic. And... Um, I guess I'd have to say that um, I can't think of any specific person, mm -hmm. um, but she and I had a very, very unique friendship in that I knew her when I was a little girl and I was just in awe of her from our church, and um, which was First Presbyterian Church. Now, one person that I could say that might have been a great influence is, was her mother-in-law. She married into a, a very prominent family in La Crosse, and her mother-in-law, Stella Gordon, was another person who she gave and gave and gave. And um, I guess maybe that's what I'd say was, and, and she and I, we could even think alike, you know, mm -hmm. even though there was this big age difference between us, but. When did she start donating her time and money, and then when did she stop? Well, she let's see. A lot of people, she was born in 1906, and people those days, it was unusual for a woman to even complete high school. And uh, she graduated <coughs> from high school and then went to Connecticut College out east and graduated magna cum laude with a... Uh, a degree in architectural design and came back to La Crosse, went to work at the Salzer Seed Company. Um, she was most proud of the fact that most of her friends didn't work, but she worked and she had her own social security card and she even saved her paychecks. You know? <laughs> but that's when um, she start, I, I guess she start, had started giving when she was probably mm, 20, 23, 24, when she started giving to, you know, different organizations. Mm -hmm. And up to about two weeks before she died, she gave thousands of dollars to the Mississippi Valley Conservancy for a, a wetlands project. Oh, yeah. And everything that she gave to was something that was going to benefit somebody. It wasn't oh. to build, you know, a building somewhere. Yeah, I read that she donated money to Lacrosse for a baseball. That was her son. Yeah. Across the Clinton Street Bridge, there's mm. a boat landing uh, on your way to the airport. Yeah. And Sandy and Gert were going to give um, a million eight to give a baseball in, in his father's name. Mm -hmm. And the city, they had a referendum, and they said, that they didn't want to have to pay for the water and, and all of that. And it really, that's what I think really did Sandy in because it was, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Did, do you think that she got enough credit as she should have from other people around the community of lacrosse? Yeah. yeah. I think she did. Like I say, nobody knew in, until her gift to the Children's Museum. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew that she really had that much money because she did it silently. Mm -hmm. You know, it was behind the scenes. And our, the Presbyterian Church in lacrosse had her mother and father in law. Mm -hmm. practically built that new church on it's on West Avenue in Cass she gave the money for the organ at the church and nobody knew that because she didn't want them to yeah. know that she, uh, another thing that she did with uh, I don't know if you're interviewing any of the hood family do you recognize that name no, I, no, that's no. another wonderful family that you know should be interviewed but she and mrs. hood who was a uh, her maiden name was Train. What? She was Betty Train and she married Wayne Hood. And uh, the two of them gave $60,000 a year each. That's $120,000 for kids to read. Oh. And nobody knew that. Oh. And you know, so she did so many things. And she was really eccentric though. I mean, Caroline, you met her a couple times and she was loud and <laughs> And um, if she had an opinion, you knew it. Mm -hmm. But nobody ever knew. She'd have dinner parties with these friends of hers. They'd play bridge, and then they'd have a dinner party. And she'd divide up what the food cost, mm -hmm. you know, and they'd all have to pay for this, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but um, I really think at the end, naming the Children's Museum after her, Really? was yeah. really all the agile. She thought it was hers. I, I want to see my museum. And then she died just six yeah, months before it, before opened, it opened. So, Would you yeah. say, like, once you donated money, her inspiration was her mother, or do you think her inspiration was, like, the community giving, getting the money and seeing them happen? That, yes, and, it, and most of the things that she gave to had something to do with children or social services. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they have this trust. And, and um, in the trust, there's like um, the Family and Children's Center, yeah. um, the public library, the um, community foundation, and most of that, the, they use that money to help other people. Yeah. Um, I brought some of the artifacts that I brought were it said to bring some of her awards and and I was telling Caroline that she's the the only woman on Central's Hall of Excellence. Really? That's yeah. cool. And there should be more women. Yeah. yeah. It shouldn't be all men that are <laughs> football players yeah. and um and then she was one of the uh, she had won the founders award at uh, uh, public library and um, you know she received a lot of awards from but you know I think that happens with people that have money people will yeah. give them a plaque to hang on the wall yeah. just because you know they're yeah. so appreciative of mm -hmm. what they've given so. <clears throat> I brought two of the um, Salzer Seed Company catalogs. Okay. And uh, they're beautiful catalogs and very colorful. And I have several of them, but uh, that represents her life with the Salzer Seed Company. And she, she did have a brother, but her brother was 12 years older than she was. Oh. So it was almost like two families, you know. And he ran the seed company until, like I say, 1953. Her husband was um, chairman of the Republican Party in Wisconsin, okay. and he died in 1943, and he was expected to run for governor of Wisconsin at the time. And so I brought a picture of, of him with Wendell Wilkie, oh. who was, they, he ran for president and didn't win, of course, but he took a train across the United States and and he 
it was called the Whistle Stop Campaign, mm -hmm. and he he would um, campaign in different towns, you oh. know, at, up from the back of this train. And Mr. Gordon rode with, with Wendell Wilkie, but then he died, so maybe he would have been governor of Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, And I brought a picture of, of Mr. Gordon and Sandy, her son, and um, let's see, what else did I bring? <laughs> oh, I brought two pictures of her as a young woman and as a, a, a little girl. And at the Children's Museum, if you ever go there, there's some wonderful pictures in, in Nana's attic of, mm -hmm. of her when she was little. Let's see, what else did I bring? I brought the two plaques. Oh, I brought, uh, when she died, I brought the uh, obituary that was in the okay. Tribune that somebody framed it for me. And on the one article in there, on the, the second article, are all the um, organizations yes. that she's donated to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, she was, she really loved lacrosse. and. Uh, one time I, I went with, she had a friend whose name was Harold Wisey. And Harold's parents built a lot of, they had a lumber yard and they built a lot of home, it was Wisey Woodworking. Mm -hmm. And he was an architect and he designed a lot of the homes in La Crosse after probably 19, in the 1930s. And uh, I went one time with the university, um, what do they call that? At the Murphy Library, they have all the artifacts from hmm, the past. Mm -hmm. I rode with them, and they had a tape recorder going, and we drove from like 7th Street to 7th and Cass over to State Street and out to the Bluff, which was the original area where people built their homes. And they told who the architects were and who had built these houses in the past and some of the houses had ballrooms on the third floor and they'd go to these big parties there. And when she died she left all her diaries and everything to me and I thought what am I going to do with all of these? They shouldn't be just sitting in, yeah. the, in my house. So I donated them to the public library and they have 14 boxes of history from her house. Wow. She had a diary from 1918 mm -hmm. and in there, now these ladies, you know, they, they give all this money and everything, but they played cards, bridge, and it was very fancy. Wow. You know, they used their best china and everything and then they'd have dinner parties and and in this, in the diary, it tells what they had to eat and what everybody wore. You know, it's it's really fascinating to yeah. to to read that stuff. So, but she um, she was just a really neat lady. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That. It sounds like. Now, not enough people know about her either. You mm -hmm. know, that's that's what I think is neat about your project that mm -hmm. you're gonna go back and find out the. Yeah. It's really interesting Important. looking at what everybody did to help you. Yeah. 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 It, it's something right. Because sometimes you don't realize, like, how no. many people have started things. Right. And right. And how many of those families are still around here, like and, the yeah. Train family mm -hmm. and the Hood family and the Hicksons. Well, Hicksons aren't around here so much, but... That one they, of the women was here today. Yeah. Yeah, Alice, Alice mm -hmm. Hickson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, I worked th this summer when they restored the Hickson House. Um, this this is just a little interesting thing about, um, you know, it was restored. So everything was in storage and we brought it back and we, the curator, we had to wear gloves to touch all this old stuff. And they said, okay, Judy, you're gonna be the one that's gonna set the dining room from the picture to what it was in, in 1903. So they had, the Hicksons had, I think I counted like 180 place settings of their china. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. It filled, you know, a whole wall. Mm -hmm. So 
they said to set it for six because the Tribune was coming to take a picture. And I was to set it exactly like it was in the picture from 1903. So I put the china out and on the sideboard there were the, the bowls and tureens. And then I went to get the crystal and that was supposed to have a water glass and a wine glass and I could only find four that matched. And they said, well, we're going to have to go buy something so for this picture. And I looked at them and I said, you know what? Let me go home and see. And here, Gert had exactly the same crystal. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And so it's on loan to the Hickson House so that they can have this table set the way it should be. And the curator said that like the Hicksons, the Salzers, the Myricks, all of those people, what they did was they would order their china and their crystal from Europe yeah. and it'd come over in, in big barrels mm -hmm. and they'd have their own china, but then they'd buy the crystal was like, we all collect some kind of yeah. thing, you know, and everybody has the same thing in their house. So all of this crystal, they all ordered the same crystal and they had to wait a long time to get it and so I really thought that was neat that I could take her stuff down mm -hmm. to the Hickson house. And yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's sort of cool to think about like if she was still alive, what, what lacrosse would be like if, right. if she was still. Yeah. Like what well, you know, the last few years that she was alive, she loved to to go downtown, you know, and, and do these things. And as she'd read in the paper, you know, she couldn't walk anymore, so I'd load her up in the car and we'd spend hours riding around so that she could see, yeah. you know, how lacrosse was changing. changing yeah. yeah. This is a picture of of her when she was about... Oh, cute. I think the, it says six years old on the back of it. That's really cool. Yeah. And then this was, this is something from the, um, th it's an ink blotter actually from the Salzer Seed Company. I know what she did when she graduated from, from uh, college and came back here, she decided that she wanted to open a little store. And so she had this house built on a corner across the street from the cathedral where there's, um, I think it's H&R Block is there. Oh, yeah. Okay. She built this house and half of it sold the seeds and plants, like a little flower shop. Mm -hmm. And the other sh side was a tea room. Nice. And it was, and um, when the depression came along, of course, you know, nobody had any money or anything. She had the house moved and it's now on uh, King Street between 17th Place and 19th. Is that um, right kind of by the graveyard area? Like no, a it's, brick house? it's over, um, if you, you know where English Lutheran Church is? Yeah. Okay, go east. On, that's King Street. Mm -hmm. And you, it's probably three blocks and it's on the left hand side it's just a little bungalow and then um, when she married her mother she had her mother move in to that house and, her, and then she built I think I have a picture of, of her house this was the the Hall of Excellence plaque and this is her the Founders Award from the Public Library and this was given to both of them, and that was the year that Gert died. See, here's some of the organizations that wow. that she's given to. This was just just the week before she died, mm -hmm. and this is this is Addie Peterson, who was a, another woman who um, she and her husband were pretty influential in giving in lacrosse too. And this was on her 90th birthday. And this is a picture of the house that, that she lived in all her married life. And um, her parents' home was on the corner of 
uh, 17th and King. It's a huge white prairie style home that was built by a very famous architect called, his name was Percy Bentley. Mm -hmm. And it was the first prairie home built in La Crosse. And she, he lived with her family while they were building the house. Oh. And so when she got married, she just moved, built this house, Kitty Corner, from her parents' house. So are these houses just houses to other people now? Or? Well, you wouldn't even recognize her house. Oh. The people that bought the house um, took off. It, it needed a lot of work. Yeah. You know, it, was, it really did. But it still has these shingles, but they um, built out here and but so it doesn't look like that but the other house has been restored to what it was when when mrs gordon lived in it and this is her husband with wendell wilkie this is her wedding invitation and this was her grad her college graduation oh, picture she's she's pretty, yeah. aren't you pretty and then she endowed the in the summertime there's the jazz in the park yeah and um, and she made it possible for them to have an endowment. That, that that's Dr. Miner, who was her doctor, and we were at the concert one night, and she said, "I want, I want you to take a picture of him up in front." She she loved, the, and those guys, Dr. Miner and Dr. Adolf, would come to the house, and they'd always bring. She loved flowers. That's another thing she did. She was she and Harriet Leinfelder established the first garden club in La Crosse. Uh, mm. That's neat. And then of course this. And this is her husband. Her husband's father, George Gordon. <clears throat> the the law firm of Johns Flaherty in La Crosse was founded by his father and it was Gordon Law and John's uh, law firm. And then this is what she did um, at the Family and Children's Center. It used to be called the Lacrosse Home for Children. Mm -hmm. When I was about 14 years old, she would, we had our youth group at church, and she'd come every year. They had an ice cream social on the lawn, and we'd have to go over them. She has um, demanded that we do that to help her. Mm -hmm. And this is um, this was an article that was in the Gunderson Lutheran Medical Foundation uh, it's called a fellowship a summer fellowship that is established for eternity probably for young um, students in college that are going into medical school yeah. and they can come and work for the summer and be paid you know it helps with their tuition here it says the Salzer Seed Company was established in 18. 1868, and then these are the seed catalogs. But there is the whole um, collection is on. They've put it on a microfiche or something now oh, at the library wow. where you can you can go look it up. And yeah. but look how colorful these were. Yeah, it's really pretty. And this is I, I've saved. I even have some at home. I have some of the seed. Um, the sale slips. Oh. And this one I just have the cover from. Well, that's neat that you have all that stuff. Yeah. That she leave you yeah. most of it. Yeah. You know the thing that she left me that I thought she had told me that she was she. Well, you know I play the piano, mm -hmm. and she was a wonderful pianist too. And uh, she had a Steinway, and. Um, she told me that she was leaving it to the church and it was in kind of rack and ruin mm -hmm. because she set plants on this beautiful piano and she'd water them, the oh, water yeah. run over the wood and everything. And uh, she'd have lots of parties and then people would put food up there and everything. So she had sent it to Joel Lidstrom who lives in uh, Caledonia and he restores. Oh. He's restoring the Steinways at um, uh, the Terrible. Okay. And so when she died, I went to the, I, I'm one of the trustees of her, um, uh, the trust. And so I had what's called a codicil to a will. You can write down in your own hand what you want people to have. 
And I had this list of, like, she had a picture that she wanted to go to her good friend, and she had a set of china mm -hmm. that she wanted someone else to have. And so I handed it to the attorney, and he said, oh, I have an envelope for you. You have an envelope for me. No, I have it. And I opened it up, and she left me mm -hmm. the piano. Okay. It's a 1916 Steinway A, and it is the most beautiful piano. So that's what I got from yeah. her, in addition to her friendship was, yeah. you know. I was, you know, it's really something when you think about someone that's 92 years old, that, you know, it's time for them to die. Mm -hmm. But I, it was just incredible how much I missed her, yeah. you know because she, she was such a big part yeah. of my life. Thank you so much for coming. Without you guys, we couldn't have done this.